Hey guys, so a little bit of explaining to do before we get into today's vlog. Number one, where were those intro shots from? I have no idea, I, I can't tell you. It was some random exit I took off the freeway on the way to Lake Elsinore yesterday from my house. I thought those hills looked pretty cool and I've always wanted to get some footage there so there you go. Truth is, this vlog was supposed to be from Players Casino in Ventura. I did go there, I did play a session, but for the first time I got told to stop filming, unfortunately. I did manage to get a few hands on camera though, so I'll share those with you guys today as well as the hands from yesterday's session at Lake Elsinore. So it's going to be a little bit of a hybrid episode. We're going to start it off with Players Casino. I really enjoyed this place and I got into a few interesting spots. So let's get into those and then we'll move on to Lake Elsinore. All right guys, so here we go. Before I jump into these hands, I just wanted to say this was a losing session for me. I want to keep it real with you guys because these two hands don't really paint the picture of the whole session. It's just the whole session wasn't really all that interesting and no one really wants to hear bad beats and how top set loses to a flush draw or whatever. So there was only really two interesting spots and I feel like these two were the only ones that were worth covering on the vlog. So just keeping it real with you guys, Let's move on to the hands. So in the first fun hand of Texas Hold'em, I look down at pocket nines from under the gun, open it up to $16 and get called by a player in middle position and the button. So three ways out of position to a pretty sexy looking flop of ace nine four rainbow. Action's on me so I continue for $20 and a little surprisingly get called by both players. So still three ways to a turn, which is even better than the flop itself, the ace of spades, giving us a full house while at the same time hopefully improving at least one of our opponents to trip aces. I decide to continue betting with a little bit of an unorthodox sizing, $20 again just to induce a raise from three aces. The middle position player quickly moves all in for 150 and the button ends up folding. I make the hero call after thinking about it for about half a second. Our opponent announces ace queen so we're not fully in the clear yet but after the river peels off the nine of hearts and we have four of the exact same card in the deck, I turn it over and we scoop a pretty decent sized pot. Always fun to make quads. A couple hours later, there's two limpers and I look down at king queen from middle position. I raise it up to $20, get called by the small blind and the limper on my right. Flop comes down queen 4-3 with two clubs, one heart. Small blind checks and out of flow, the player on my right decides to lead for $40. She'd been fairly active, but I'm still not sure what to make of this bet. So when the action's on me, I think it's a pretty straightforward call. So that's what I do and the small blind calls as well. The small blind has around 200 behind, but the player on my right has 600, so still plenty of money left behind. Three ways to a turn, which comes the 10 of diamonds. This time the action checks to me, and I think you can go either way between a bet and a check here. I think there's merit to both here. If we check, our hand is under wrapped and it might increase the bluffing frequency from either opponent on the river, therefore making our hand a bit more profitable as a deceptive check. But if we bet, we can get value from, for example, club draws or 6-5 for a straight draw, which otherwise would not be available on the river, obviously. So I think about it for a while and decide to check. The river comes off the seven of hearts, so the clubs miss, but 6-5 does get there. The small blind checks for a third time, and this time the lady on my right 
leads out for $75. Kind of a weird line by her, but after checking back the turn and being pretty under repped, I think it's a pretty trivial call, so that's what I do. And luckily the small blind folds because it would have been pretty gross to face a back raise all in from him. Anyway, she announces ace high. I happily turn it over and scoop this one. Seems like we got max value by taking a passive line versus a pretty active opponent. Anyway, nothing too interesting happened after this hand aside from a few suck outs. So I'm gonna bring you back to my present version self and we're gonna transition over to Lake Elsinore. So those were the hands from Players Casino in Ventura. I actually ended up booking a small loss. However, yesterday I got a chance to fix this loss with some good old fashioned two, three, no limit at Lake Elsinore. You guys know I love to play here. The location's awesome, the people are friendly, and the action is great. Yesterday was no exception, so let's do it. Let's get into these hands. Alright, so here we go, playing at Lake Elsinore, 2-3, no limit, in for 300, and in the first interesting hand, there's four limpers, and I look down at 8-7 of diamonds from the small blind. I toss in the extra dollar, and the big blind checks, so we see it multi-way, comes down 6-5-5, five, five, rainbow with no diamonds. Action checks all the way to the hijack, who bets $12. I actually contemplated just letting it go here because he only had around 50 or $60 behind, so not really enough money behind to draw to a straight profitably, but considering that there's other opponents in the hand and one of them could call as well, I decided to just make the call, but unfortunately everyone else folded, so heads up with the hijack to a pretty sweet looking turn, the nine of clubs, so we turn a straight, I decide to lead here. I want to make sure the money gets in and if he checks back here, I'm not sure if that'll happen on the river. So I lead for $15 and he quickly makes the call. River comes an offsuit queen, so it doesn't really change anything. I move all in for his remaining $35 or $40. Our opponent snap calls, so it seems like this might be a little bit of a cooler. I turn it over and he confidently turns over pocket twos. I wish I could explain to you guys what's going on here, but honestly, I can't. A few orbits later, I find Ace Jack offsuit from under the gun. Open it up to 15. This is kind of near the bottom of my raising range from this position, but the table was pretty passive, so I wasn't too worried about it. Anyway, $15 to go, the cutoff makes the call and the button makes the call. Both of these opponents are at least 100 big blinds deep and fairly aggressive, so when the flop comes down ace, queen, six with two spades, I decide to play it as a check call considering that this is one of the weaker aces I'll have in my range and also both of these opponents, like I said, are pretty aggressive. So I check it, the cutoff checks and the button puts out a bet of $15. I make the straightforward call and the cutoff folds. So we see the turn heads up, which is the four of diamonds. I check it again, and he continues for $35. Again, nothing to do but make the call, so that's what I do. The river comes the three of spades, so the front door flush gets there, I check it, and he doesn't waste too much time before moving all in for around $200, actually a little bit over that. So it's a pretty interesting spot. I think for the most part, he's just representing flushes because if he somehow did flop two pairs or maybe even a set, I suspect he would check back such a scary looking river, especially when it looks like I could easily have a flush draw the way I played the hand. Another small consideration was that I expected my opponent to, at least at some frequency, check back flush draws on the turn and just take the free river card after getting called by the preflop raiser on an ace high board. So I think about it for a while and considering that I have the ace of spades which blocks a lot of his potential flushes, I don't think I'm going to be able to fold here. I played this hand pretty passively and this is exactly the kind of action I suspected when taking this line so even though it's a little sketchy, I decide to make the call after thinking about it for a minute or two. Our opponent just mucks his hand. So we take down a pretty healthy pot without having to show down. Always nice.
And that brings us to the last interesting hand. The straddle is on. The player on my right opens for $16 from middle position. I look down at ace queen offsuit from the cutoff. I think you could sometimes three bet here, especially considering that the open seems a little bit small with a straddle out there. But the player who opened in this case was a pretty straightforward and somewhat tight player. So I decided to just make the call. The button makes the call, the big blind makes the call, and the straddler somehow folds. So we see the flop four ways, it comes down queen, jack, eight, rainbow. Action checks to the pre-flop aggressor who continues for $50 here with around 120 or 130 behind. And honestly, even though we flop such a strong hand, alarm bells are instantly going off in my head because I just didn't think he was the type to bluff into three people on a straddled pot. So eliminating bluffs, if he's betting here for value, there's actually not very much that we beat. Unless he has specifically ace queen or king queen, we're not doing too good against his range. I almost made a Mike Postle type fold here, like I could see his cards and it just felt like kings, but couldn't bring myself to do it. Ended up making the call and the button called as well. So three ways to a turn, which came the eight of clubs. This time he jams for 120, and I think after we call the flop, there's just no getting away from it here, especially considering how big the pot is. I decide to move all in, actually, to deny equity from the button behind me, who I would expect would raise the flop with any hand better than ace-queen. He quickly makes the fold. I ask the player to my right if he has pocket kings. You got kings, man? And he says, yes, good read. So we're looking for some help here on the river, which unfortunately comes an offsuit 10. Nothing really we can do, I think, except maybe make the hero fold on the flop. Seems kind of crazy, but I really did almost lay it down. Anyway, we end up losing a pretty sizable pot. And those were the main three hands from the Lake Elsinore session. So all in all, booked a small but healthy win. I'm happy to take it. So that's a wrap from Lake Elsinore. I ended up booking a small win. Unfortunately, not quite enough to make up for Saturday at Players Casino, but as you guys know, it's one long session, right? So not too worried about it. A few announcements before I wrap this video up. I'll be heading to Morongo on Sunday. They do splash pots for the NFL games, so I'll be playing 2-5. The games get pretty big and I'm thinking of vlogging it as well. So that'll probably be the next episode. And one other thing before I sign off, Tuesday, October 8th, there's a meetup game hosted by Brad Owen and Andrew Nimi. I'm sure you guys are familiar with who those guys are. They're hosting a meetup game at Hollywood Park Casino in LA. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be vlogging. So if any of you guys are gonna be there, make sure to say what's up. And if you haven't heard about it, I should just do go because it's going to be a lot of fun and the games are going to be pretty great, I think. So anyway, hopefully I catch you guys there. If not, maybe Morongo this Sunday. So yeah, I think that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for the support. Thank you for giving this video a thumbs up if you did. It really helps me out. I appreciate you guys. And I think that's it. Okay, bye. I'll see you next time.